I shot a bunch of SMGs at a wall to rank all of them amongst each other in terms of DPS and controllability. Here's what I found out. Some things have changed since the assault rifle tier list. One thing I added was a series of controlled bursts to the recoil portion of the tests to more accurately reflect what an actual siege gunfight is going to look like. This is a good way to measure the practical impact of the weapon's recoil spread. I'll also be looking at the shots to pick off a one armor, two armor, and three armored opponent. This stat is not as important for SMGs as it is for assault rifles, considering most SMGs have pretty linear, learnable recoil and not a lot of side-to-side -side kick. For the sake of consistent experimental design, I put a foregrip on every weapon. However, I did take barrel attachments off. People are gonna run suppressors and possibly extended barrel if those changes go through in the next patch. Since recoil for the most part in this weapon class is pretty much negligible, we're gonna be talking a lot about rate of fire and how it affects the DPS of the weapon. Something you may find interesting is that the average rate of fire for a submachine gun in this game is about 834 rounds per minute. It's been a while since I took stats in college, but I found a calculator online that gave me the standard deviation of about 160. So a rate of fire lower than 670 rounds per minute is fairly low. Lower than 510, very low. Anything higher than 980, fairly high. Anything higher than 1140, very high. The 9mm C1 has considerably low recoil, but mainly because of a considerably low fire rate of 575 rounds per minute, only calves is lower at 550. That's still almost two standard deviations away from the mean, so you get the idea it has pretty slow T to K, with a damage curve of three shots to Ash and four to Buck and Zove. The 9mm C1's biggest calling card is its laser beam accuracy from just about any range which is a plus, the further away you are with this weapon, the more you'll probably get out of it. The biggest takeaway is that it's remarkably easy to use and hit heads with, so that's certainly not a bad thing, but you'll find many options in this video with faster damage output than the C1 while maintaining controllability. The rate of fire holds it back, statistically, and I can't put it a lot higher than C tier when we start comparing it to other SMGs. The VTS is the most seven out of 10 weapon in Siege in the most polite and non-insulting way possible. It's pretty easy to control, so recoil is a non-issue, and it has a slightly, slightly below average rate of fire for SMGs at 750. The average is about 830. Still, the damage profile is three shots for Ash and four for Buck and Zof, so it's not incapable of taking opponents down if you don't hit the head. It's just good enough in every category without getting in your way. And we're going to see a lot of weapons at this tier throughout the course of the video. The AUG A3 doesn't particularly blow me away. It's another slightly below average rate of fire, low recoil SMG, with three shots to take down Ash and four to take down Buck and Zof. Since it has a lower rate of fire than the VTAS, it has slower damage output, but it's not slow enough to warrant putting it in a tier below the VTAS. So it's going to be right next to it at B tier. For some weird reason, the Commando is labeled as an assault rifle, even though it's not and I went to check the damage falloff because that's usually the differentiating factor here in Siege. It has the same falloff as the AUG A3, which has the same damage rating of 36. So, uh, I I'm, I'm not really sure what's going on here. I'm feeling like it was a misinput. The misinput, misinput, calm down! You calm the fuck down! There's a misinput! It's got almost the same rate of fire. It's got the same damage as the AUG A3. It's basically another AUG A3. It's in the same tier as the AUG A3. The FMG9 recently got a recoil nerf, and I gotta say it's a pain to get used to. That 800 rounds per minute fire rate still isn't high by SMG standards, so it definitely feels like a kick in the teeth, considering one of the FMG9's calling cards was relatively quick damage output, with three shots to take down Bandit and four for Smoke and Maestro. While the recoil isn't enough to make it unusable for the diehard Smoke or Nuck main, it is enough to deter some players. It still has decent damage output all around, with a recoil that is most importantly linear, not side to side. For reasons that I will explain later, it is at B tier, because there is another option with identical damage output and rate of fire that is a lot more easy to control. So objectively, it's just not gonna be as good. Nobody knows or cares that the K1A is actually an assault rifle in real life. You just looked it up on Wikipedia. This is probably another unpopular take, that will be had for the Kia. Unfortunately, since it has a slightly low rate of fire of 720 and the typical three shots for Ash and four for Buck and Zof in terms of body shots. It is in the same category of rate of fire around 700 to 800 with middle of the pack damage output and little recoil at B tier. No discernible difference here to make it a separate tier unto itself. I'd still rather have the K1A than the M12 though. The M12 
might have a three-shot body shot frag against Buck, but it still has four against Zoe, and its fire rate is abysmally slow at 550. That is almost two standard deviations away from the mean. That's really bad. It has no recoil to speak of, but without it, the gun would be pretty much useless. Absolutely and miserably slow damage output, Cav's SMG is for her to soften up opponents from far away and get enteros or to occasionally pick off with headshots. I actually think the Spaz-15 is a better weapon option, considering when I have the choice between the best semi-auto shotgun in the game and the worst SMG in the game, I'm gonna go with the shotgun. Sorry. We finally get to the NATO-pilled SMG of choice, the MP5. We couldn't have a game like Siege without it, and it maintains a decent presence among its contemporaries with an easy-to-control recoil spray. However, while its fire rate of 800 is middle of the pack, its damage output is kind of weak with four body shots against Ash, and five against Buck and Zof, so you really gotta hit the head. Without the scopes that Doc and Rook get, the MP5 is in a pretty rough situation, and there are options that I think are better than the MP5, so unfortunately, it will be in B tier, alongside many other weapons that are comparable in terms of effectiveness. The MP5K is almost identical to the MP5, but oddly enough, it has slightly more damage, so instead of four, five, and five, it does four, four, and five to Ash, Buck, and Zof respectively. It has the exact same rate of fire and comparable controllability. So with typical barrel attachments, and for the purpose of the tests, it goes next to the MP5 because that additional bit of damage doesn't do anything particularly crazy for it in my opinion. If the extended barrel changes go through for the next patch, I would put the MP5K at A tier, just cause it would have the damage profile of an FMG9 with half of the recoil. Echo's MP5 SD is so cool that I want it to be reused on other operators. Although statistically, it is another middle of the pack SMG. Four shots to body shot Ash and Buck, five for Zof. 800 rounds per minute. Easy to control recoil. It's almost identical in function to the MP5. And it has that integrated suppressor, which I guess is cool in the sense that it gives you an excuse to run it. You're probably gonna be able to figure this one out on your own. It's B tier, nothing too crazy going on. Okay, so I promise not every weapon in this list is going to be B tier. Finally, we're getting above average rate of fire at 900 rounds per minute in the MP7. And the best part about this high rate of fire is that it's on a weapon that's easy to control. Want to know something else really cool? It actually has a good damage curve too. In fact, its damage curve is four shots to the body to kill any armor type. So the damage output overall on the MP7 is pretty quick. It has a standard sized mag. It's a laser beam with a high rate of fire. There isn't really a single thing about this weapon that's particularly bad, and it does at least good in every category. The MP7 is an S tier weapon in my book for these reasons, among some of the best SMGs in the game. We're gonna get to the slightly higher fire rate MP5, the MPX, but that 830 fire rate finally brings it to an average fire rate for SMGs. Now, most SMGs in Rainbow Six Siege are actually at 800, that's the median point for the data set. So the MPX has an edge and damage output here when you consider it has the same shots to kill as them. Four, five, and five to Ash, Buck, and Zof respectively for body shots total. The rate of fire and low recoil make this thing better at nabbing headshots though. Thanks to a higher rate of fire, the MPX stands distinctly from the likes of the MP5 and deserves its A tier rating, even though I think some options in the same tier are a little bit better. Despite a nerf to its recoil relatively recently, it was a linear recoil nerf and is still manageable. The MX-4 is a 950 rounds per minute firing laser beam with a damage profile of four body shots to Ash and five to Buck and Zof. So it's got the damage profile of an MP5, but it doesn't have the rate of fire problems that that weapon has. And its damage output is by default faster. 950 is considerably fast for any weapon, but also for SMGs in general, and gives it a lethal punch in heads-up gunfights that makes it a force to be reckoned with in skilled hands. The combination of low recoil and really high rate of fire, plus decent damage output, make the MX-4 an S-tier weapon. Ah, the Roni, the aimbro weapon of choice for some time before the recoil and magazine nerf. This thing has seen better days, and for some reason is still, well... You know, I'm not putting it at A-tier, and I'll tell you why. Other weapons have comparable fire rate at 980, and have somewhat easier to control recoil. If that wasn't enough, the Roni has a 15 round mag. I don't care how cracked you are, you cannot out-aim magazine capacity. You will be limited in terms of the number of engagements you can take in a row. This is the argument we had over the Type 89. Yes, the other stats are good, but this one is considerably bad. Without those other good stats, this low magazine size would make the Roni unusable. There are better options, but it does have redeeming qualities, so I'll put it at B tier.
The P90 has recently gained more notoriety from its presence on Solus, and rightfully so. The damage output is quite weak. Five body shots against Ash and Buck, and a considerably slow output of six against Zoph. However, it does have a high rate of fire. You will have to hit the head if you want to get the most out of this weapon. Fortunately, the P90 makes it easy for you. It also has a 50 round mag. That 50 round mag unironically does come in handy and gives you a lot of positioning options other weapons just don't have. With a high rate of fire and laser-like controllability combined with the ability to not have to reload as often, the P90 gives the wielder a ton of options in gunfights and goes at A tier, S if it weren't for its bad damage output. The PDW-9 is pretty good. It's basically an FMG-9 that's easier to control and has a 50 round mag. You want to know how easy it is to control? Well, I forgot to put the foregrip on and the recoil <laughs> is still pretty weak. If all that doesn't sell you, I don't know what will. 800 rounds per minute rate of fire isn't super duper quick, but it's easy enough to hit heads with. And like I mentioned earlier with the P90 example, the mag size gives you more forgiving positioning options and sets it apart from the FMG9 as a result for an A tier rating. The Scorpion has been lobbied for on the behalf of big fire rate propaganda, much like Twitch's F2. Not only is the Scorpion more difficult to control than the rest of its peers, the damage curve stinks with a five shot kill against Ash and Buck and a six shot kill against Zoe. Sure, it has a high rate of fire at 1080. Sure, it has a big magazine, but other options don't have as many downsides. The Scorpion has one calling card in its high rate of fire, while every other category suffers and makes it difficult to capitalize on. Why would I run the Scorpion over the P90? With a comparable fire rate, a bigger mag, and very little recoil, the Scorpion falls in line with the rest of the overrated fire rate weapons of Rainbow Six Siege. Everything else about it sucks, except the fire rate. I don't care if the fire rate is high if I can't hit what the hell I'm aiming at. It doesn't matter how much you pull down, because the recoil goes from side to side. It's B tier. It's not bad, it's just not A or S. The T5 is pretty much identical to Bandit's MP7. Aside from that, it struggles against Zof armored opponents a bit more with a five body shot kill instead of four. Other than that, the weapon has the same 900 rounds per minute rate of fire and it has pretty easy to control recoil. It's a great weapon in just about every regard, but that inability to punch down heavily armored opponents does differentiate it from the MP7. So I'm not putting it in S tier. The UMP45 is a weird one. It has a fire rate of 600, which is considerably low, but it also has a damage rating of 38, which is to put things into perspective, the same damage rating that Jaeger's 416 has, that Ash's G36 has. Three body shots against Ash and Buck, four against Zof. Don't forget that the weapon is very easy to control, so it's not difficult to get headshots from far away. The high damage rating benefits the ump in long range gunfighting where it shines compared to its peers. If you like playing from a distance, you might like the ump, and some might be surprised to say I don't hate it as much as I used to, but it's not a good weapon. Effective for what it is, yeah, but it's not anything special. C tier, although it's not D tier anymore. The UZK got hit over the nerf bat hard to mitigate the addition of the extended barrel damage buff. Now it's going to have a completely different damage curve, which knocks it down a peg. Three body shots for Ash, four for Buck and Zof. The rate of fire is not high, the magazine is not big. Now, all this thing really has going for it is its low recoil, which is kind of lame. I think the UZK is a B tier without extended barrel, while keeping an A tier rating with the extended barrel. People will look for some way for the UZK to keep its three-shot body shot kill against two armors, since two armors are the majority of opponents in the game. Without the extended barrel, you'll have to hit heads, which the UZK is just not as good at doing since its fire rate and capacity are pretty low. It's difficult to call the Vector anything other than the best SMG in the game. It has the highest rate of fire of any SMG at a blistering 1200 rounds per minute, which just to put that into perspective is over two standard deviations away from the mean fire rate. Despite that the weapon is relatively easy to control and doesn't have a lot of side to side kick, the damage profile is five shots to Ash and Buck for body shots and six to Zoe. That's relatively low, but the fire rate is very high. So the TTK still remains low. It fries with body shots. It's easy to hit heads with. The Vector doesn't really have any glaring weaknesses aside from the small magazine. You'll chew for that magazine really quickly, but I think the benefits of having a 1200 rounds per minute rate of fire outweigh that. Not a lot of weapons in Siege have a rate of fire like that. This is definitely a statistical anomaly. Good damage output, no recoil, 1200 rounds per minute, S tier. Easy S tier. Here's the final version of the list. As you can see, it's weighted in the middle quite heavily, but it actually resembles a normal distribution curve. As for machine pistols, that's probably a good idea for a YouTube short, so you should subscribe to see that one when it comes out.
Thanks for watching. Let me know what you think of this in the comments. Deuces.